The Volkswagen Beetle is everywhere. If you watch a movie from the 60s or 70s, you might spot one every second or two a character is outside. The vintage bug is not as prevalent as it once was, but there are plenty of them still out there if you want one for yourself. But we're not focusing on Beetles exactly today. I want to talk to you about everybody's favorite Volkswagen, Herbie the Love Bug. If you want to own a replica movie car, Herbie might be the easiest one to build, but there are good ways and bad ways to do so. We're going to mainly focus on the cars from the original movie. And yes, I said cars. There were 21 cars used in the original production, some of them buried in your model. There are a lot of Volkswagen Beetles in the world, but Herbie was a 1963 model with a sliding sunroof that some people call a ragtop, which is this car. Now, 63 ragtops are not the easiest Volkswagens to find, so I'm gonna show you guys how you can make your car look like this one. Now, I'm not claiming to be any kind of expert, and my family does own a vintage Volkswagen shop. And between my father and me, we own over 50 vintage Volkswagen Beetles in varying conditions. So maybe that'll make this video seem legit. So let's start with cars that you don't wanna use. These things might all look the same to you. They've all got the same fenders, same windows, same doors, right? Wrong! The first thing you want to avoid is a Super Beetle. Now, a lot of people don't realize what a Super Beetle is. They can't tell the difference between a Super Beetle and a Standard Beetle. I'm going to tell you how to spot them right now. If you open the trunk on a Super Beetle, the spare tire lays flat. In a Standard Beetle, the spare tire sits upright like you see in the Love Bug. The Super Beetle is wider than a standard Beetle. The hood looks completely different. The easiest way to spot Super Beetles, and this isn't every Super Beetle, so don't call me on this, is a set of grooves of louvers under the hood in the front. They started making Super Beetles in 1971 and continued up until the end of the 70s. The 1971 and 72 Super Beetle looks very similar to the standard Beetle and the later Super Beetles do. The 71 and 72 Super Beetle use the same windshield as a standard Beetle. The main difference between a Super Beetle and a standard Beetle is the front end. The Super Beetle has fenders that are they're curved on the bottom. So the apron on a Super Beetle is curved. When you line these up to a standard Beetle, they look completely different. And I'm not knocking Super Beetles. Tons of people love Super Beetles. Tons of people hate them. I'm just saying, from my point of view, when I see a a Herbie replica that is made out of a Super Beetle, it's, it just doesn't, doesn't look right. Especially if you go 1973 up. In 1973, they changed the windshield on the Super Beetle. The windshield became more of a bubble. So Super Beetles are not what you want. There are different kinds of bumpers in 1963, but Herbie had the Overrider bumpers, which are commonly called towel rack bumpers. Now you can put these bumpers on later model bugs, right? They fit up until 1967. So what you really wanna go for is a 1967 and back Beetle if you're trying to go for a Herbie replica. You can put those bumpers on post 1967 cars. You have to get a bumper adapter kit, which MP sells. The only problem is that on the front end of a Volkswagen, the 1963 Beetle, um, the bumper, brackets went through the front apron. On 68 and up Beetles, the bumper brackets go through the fender and mount on the outside of the apron. So if you're running older fenders on a 68 and up Beetle, then you are gonna have to figure something out. You may have to cut holes in the fender to get the bumper brackets to go on. Likewise, if you are going all out and changing the, the front apron on a bug, on a 68 and later bug to run a different hood, which we'll talk about later, then that's something that you're not really gonna worry about, but you will have to figure out how to mount the bumpers onto that, that apron that you put on there. Rear fenders don't change a whole lot all the way to the end of the 70s, but the front fenders are something that are super noticeable. Herbie has the 1966 and down front fenders. Now 1964 was different than the 1963. 1963 was the last year that they used the people call peanut turn signals that Herbie had. In 1964, the turn signals became wider. 1964 Fender, the turn signals mounted further back. The headlights were this round Herbie headlights until 1966. In 1967, 
they went to a more flatter assembly that you see from 1968 all the way to the end of the Beetle production. So the 1967 fenders are not what you want for Herbie. They look different. The 67 fenders are one year only. They still have the horn grill right here, which the 68 doesn't. The 67 fender looks a lot like a 60, it's like a 68 and a 66 sort of combined. The only thing the 67 bug really has for it are the seats, the hood, and the bumpers. 67 is not really what you want for a Herbie. 67s are very popular because a lot of parts on them are one year only, so they're kind of special. So you might not want to change a 67 into a Herbie anyway. You may infuriate a lot of Volkswagen enthusiasts. Um, the cool thing about that, though, is uh, the movie Bumblebee, that's a 67 bug. So if you end up with a 67 bug, you can forget about Herbie, you can make a Bumblebee clone. The back fenders are pretty much the same up until 1967. So the taillights, Herbie had 1962 to 1967 taillights. The 1958 and 1961 VW bugs had what they call snowflake taillights. Now the Herbie taillights aren't as cool as the snowflake taillights. In 1968, the taillights got even fatter. And then in 71, 72, they got even fatter. Regulations in the United States forced Volkswagen in 1973 to come out with the fattest taillight assemblies possible. They call the 73 and up Volkswagen taillights the elephant foot taillights, which they, I mean, it's a good name for them. They, they look like elephant feet. The fenders on the back of a 73 and up bug have grooves cut into them for the elephant foot taillights. You cannot put Herbie taillights on a 73 68 and up fenders have holes drilled in different places for the taillights. Uh, the taillight housing on a 63 bug is big enough to where you can cover those holes and you can mount these on a later fender. The bumper bracket holes are different and that's how people tell the difference between that. Wanna give that doodle bug a workout? The Herbie hood is uh, up to 1967. If you look at a 67 and back hood versus the 68 and up standard beetle hood, Aside from the curve at the bottom, the 68 being fatter, but not as fat as a Super Beetle hood. So in 68, they put a little air box under the hood that um, helps air airflow through the car. The 67 and back hood does not have that, that vent at the top. Now Herbie did not have the vents. If you want to get technical about it, the original Herbie didn't have Volkswagen emblems because they did not have Volkswagen's approval to make the film. On the hood, and on the sides of the car, the trim on a 1963 bug is the fat trim. In 1967, they went to the more skinny trim that they would use for the rest of the Beetle production. 1966 back, the trim is more Herbie-like. You can put the fat trim on a later bug. It, the difference is noticeable. In 1965, they changed the windshield. So 64 back had a complete flat glass in the front. In 1965, uh, the windshield has a slight curve to it. The side windows are different on a 65 Volkswagen compared to a 64. So a 64 Beetle is what they call a little window car. If you look at the quarter glass from a 1964 and back bug versus a 1965 and up bug, you can see the difference in the window size. So you wanna avoid the big window cars if you can. So a 1964 and back Beetle are what you wanna go with. Even though they did occasionally use big window cars as Herbies in some of the movies, but they're noticeable when you see them. This is called the deck lid. The 1963 Beetle has a more narrow at the bottom deck lid and it has a license plate light housing, which VW people refer to as a Pope nose. In 1963, that was the last year they had the Pope nose stock. So in 1964, 65, 66, the deck lid changed. Or the license plate light housing got flatter and thicker. And the bottom of the deck lid is a little more curved and not kind of angled more like a 63 deck lid is. But the deck lid on a 67, 68, changes even more. So it gets shorter and it gets fatter. So as you go throughout the years, it looks less and less like the 63 deck lid that you were looking for. Uh, so you're really looking for a 58 to 63 deck lid. I will say the later you get on the deck lids, the more slits you get in the deck lid, 
and the harder it's gonna be to put that 53 on the back. You feeling better, Ocho? Herbie has what they call a wide five wheel pattern. Now the buses would use wide five until 1970, but the Beatles changed in 1968. 68 had a four lug pattern compared to the five lug. You cannot run five lug Herbie wheels on 68 and up Beatles without a lot of work to change them. Yes, depending on what type of Herbie you're making, Herbie had widened wheels. They widened the wheels six inches, but if you paint five lug wheels the color of Herbie, I mean, they look okay. Monte Carlo. Herbie has low back seats. They are very popular and very sought after. The seats on 1968 and up Beatles are high back seats. They have a headrest. Herbie does not have a headrest on his seats until the later movies. They added the high backs to Herbie so you could hide the stunt driver a little bit better. The classic Herbie, the Herbie that I would want to make, has low back seats. So low back seats cost a little more, but they're all over the place. So it's important to note here though that you can't put low back seats in every year model car. In 1971, they changed the floor pans of the Volkswagen Bug. The seat rails for the older cars, 1970 and back, are different than the 1971 and 72 seat rails. So you cannot put 71 seats in a 70 Bug without a lot of work. It changed even more in 73. There is a front mount for a 73 Beetle seat compared to the just the two rails on the older bugs. So if you want Herbie accurate seats, a 1963 bug seat is not gonna fit in anything past 1970. Yeah. Be serious, will you? Running boards are these little things that go from fender to fender under the door. And they are basically one size fits all. So a 1974 Beetle, a Super Beetle, Herbie, they all have the same running boards. The only difference is the, the size of the trim on the side. Uh, depending on the brand, depending on the year model, that's going to be different. The one thing to note is that Herbie had white running boards in the original movie. Now that changed a little bit as the movies went on, but if you're going for an accurate first movie replica, that's what you want. Now some other interior things are different. In 68, the shifter knob changed, the steering wheel changes in the 70s. The chrome horn ring disappears and you go to more of a plastic look. The door handles for the doors, uh, they changed in 1967. 67 was one year only. In 1968, the door handles basically stayed the same for the rest of the tenure of the bug. In Herbie, the rearview mirror is attached to the sun visors. In 1965, the rearview mirror is one piece and then the sun visors are separate. In 68, the window cranks changed. Also, the door handles that open the inside of the door. The biggest thing is the dash. In a 1968 Beetle, the dash is padded. You've got a rubber pad on it. Now, one cool thing about that is that you can take the pad off. You can rip the pad out and you can sand the dash down and paint it and you'll have a more Herbie looking dash. Interior wise, 67 back is what you want to kind of aim for. When you look at the dash in the Love Bug, uh, the one thing you will notice is that there's no gas gauge on Herbie in the movie. The gas gauge was introduced in 1962. So a 63 Beetle has a gas gauge on the right side of the steering wheel. Basically all they did in 62 was cut a hole on the grill that was on the dash and they stuck that, that gauge in. Or Herbie's ceiling on the inside of the car was basically battleship gray. They did that so the film lights would not reflect when they were filming the movie. They didn't want reflection. So they, they painted it a dull color. They did the same thing with the dash and the rest of the interior. Everything was just a dull gray. The thing that sticks out like a sore thumb on most inaccurate Herbies is the sunroof. Now I said already that Herbie was a 1963 bug with the sliding sunroof. People who make Herbies without a ragtop, that's the first thing I look for. Ragtops are super hard to find. There are different ways to add a ragtop to your car or to do a Herbie facade. One, graft in a ragtop. You can find a donor ragtop. I've got one sitting at the junkyard. People sell ragtop clips, which is basically the top of the car. Ragtops are popular outside of the Herbie community. The one thing that I would do if I had a 1964 Beetle that looked just like Herbie in every other way but the sunroof, you can buy the sunroof canvas. I would just bolt that onto the top of the car. They did that 
in some of the Herbie movies. So some of the actual Herbie cars were not ragtop cars. I, I know of at least two of them that had the sunroof material just attached to the top of the car. The Herbie car is not white. You don't want to paint your car bright white. That's not going to look like Herbie. Herbie was actually more of a, a pearl color. Uh, the actual VW paint was um, L87 pearl white. The biggest thing you notice on an inaccurate Herbie are the actual decals. Now you can either paint 53s and stripes on a Herbie car or you can buy decal kits online or have some made. The biggest perpetrator of inaccurate Herbies is the placement of the hood 53. So the 53 on the hood needs to be in the perfect place. If you go too far back, it's going to look weird. Now, actual Herbie movies have done this. If you look at the Bruce Campbell Herbie movie, which, you know, I love Bruce Campbell. The placement of the decals are very important. If you put them in the wrong place, it looks terrible. Now there are some things I left out, like the mirrors, the radio, you know, maybe I'll make another video about that later. The $64,000 question right now is, am I going to convert this car? I don't know. What do you guys think? See you later.